So you've got 20 Democrats who are now running for president. Not only did they break the Republicans' record from 2016 with 17 candidates, and we all remember how crowded that debate stage was, they've done it sooner, as you can see from this chart, with 100 weeks to go. Back then, the party took some heat for splitting up its first seven debates into two separate events, right? We had the evening and then we had the undercard. This time, the Democrats say that they're going to do things differently. But my next guest, the former communications director for the RNC, doesn't think that. And the other changes will work. Sean Spicer, former White House press secretary, writes in the Wall Street Journal op-ed, candidate proliferation and a Fox News ban will mean the party will fail where the GOP succeeded in 2016. Joining me now is Sean Spicer, current senior advisor and spokesman for America First, <clears throat> excuse me, America First Action. Sean, good to see you tonight. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. So Jane Mayer at The New Yorker, who um, doesn't write very kind things about us generally, <laughs> she said that she's very upset that Democrats have been doing town halls um, on Fox News. And she says that they ought to aim their fire at Fox News for making cooperation with it more indefensible by the day. What do you say, Sean? Well, look, I think Democrats who choose not to go on Fox News are cutting their nose off to spite them, themselves. You've seen the ratings that you and Brett have gotten on your town hall, 2.65 million people. Yeah. That dwarfs the other outlets combined um, in many cases throughout their day. And much of the Fox audience is receptive to the Democratic Party. So they're, they're left-leaning, they're independents. I think these are the folks that Democrats go. And you look at the top folks understand that Bernie Sanders is the leading the pack went on Fox had a very successful outing with you and Brett I think exposed himself to an audience that he's not getting through the other outlets and by them banning Fox at some point and I don't want to speak for your for your management but at some point either Fox or another outlet is going to say screw it we're gonna put our we're gonna host a debate and the problem is, is that when we did this we we had everybody buy in and it was held together at times by some pretty thin duct tape but it worked and it was successful. The Democrats, by banning people and allowing everybody to get a participation trophy and find different ways to make it on the debate stage, mm -hmm. has created a system that isn't going to hold true because candidates always are going to look for an outlet to, to you know, reach new voters, and Fox and Definitely. other outlets are going to jump in and fill the void. Definitely. I mean, we have, you know, 30 percent of our viewers uh, consider themselves to be independent voters, and we all know that there were uh, voters who crossed over from being uh, in 206 counties across the country who voted for President Obama, then voted for President Trump. I think that people are very, a lot more, you know, we talk about the divisiveness in the country uh, quite a bit, but I also think that a lot of people feel that they're not really affiliated with either party and that they look at the, the candidates and they try to decide, you know, who they think is going to do the best job. In terms of the way that, that constructing the debates, what the Democrats have said they're going to do right now is do it randomly, Sean. And I know yeah. that you wrote about this. You decided, you know, if you made a certain cutoff, you could be on at night. And if you didn't, you were on the next one down. And if you moved up and you got a greater percentage, then you moved up into that, right. you know, primetime tier. That's right. And the way the Democrats are doing it, they're putting some folks who aren't even polling at 1% that they've gotten 65,000 donations of a minimum of a dollar. And I write in the op-ed uh, that's on my website, SeanSpicer.com, for those who want to see it, that one candidate, Congressman Delaney, is literally offering people $2 to the charity of their choice if they will contribute $1 to his campaign. Now, that's an ingenious way of getting him on the debate stage. But at, the, at, that, at that point, he still isn't polling at a minimum of 1%. So he's going to be taking pot shots at the folks at the top, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, uh, Mayor Pete, and others, to try to find his viral breakout moment. And there's only so long that those folks at the top are going to withstand that and say, this is ridiculous. Folks who aren't even pulling at 1% are spending all of their time on stage taking pot shots at those of us who are actually garnering significant amount of support within the Democratic Party. I don't think that, that is, that's going to be another, you know, touchstone of how this system is probably going to fail when they, when they realize this randomized system might sound good, uh, that everybody gets a participation trophy and gets to show up on one or two nights. But it's not going to hold true for a while yeah. when people who are at the top don't like getting hit by people at the bottom. Yeah. Fascinating. And, you know, as we always say, we really hope that they will reconsider. And we hope that the town halls that we've done show that we are, are fair. We ask, you know, challenging questions, but that it is not. Our interest is to make sure that voters across the country are exposed to all of the candidates. And that's, that's the goal. And that's what we want to do. Uh, and, totally. I, and, I, and I think, and I think the ahead. success that you had in terms of the rating 
ratings and the number of people and then the coverage afterwards. Yeah. Uh, people have both commented on, on the what job that you and Brett did, uh, but then the number well, of you. people that tuned in. And I think that, that every other Democrat, is, from what I read in the paper, is now trying to figure out how they can get their own. Yeah, it's well, only we, a matter of hope, time we when they, they realize, and why don't we do a debate? Right. And, and, that, and, I'm, yeah. I'm open to that idea. Um, Pete Buttigieg is going to go on with Chris Wallace. A quick question for you about Alabama politics, because there's a story today, and it's football night with the NFL draft, but this is a college football story, that Tommy Tuberville, uh, the Auburn coach, is considering or is going to run for the oh, yeah. Senate seat in Alabama, uh, which is now held by Doug Jones, and that you are working with him. Is that true? Absolutely. And what's your Tommy's, role? Uh, what's your role? He's, I, I'm, I'm, right now, I'm, I'm advising him. Um, we're doing some work for him on the mail and digital front, but he's a great candidate. He's been the only candidate on the Republican side so far that has been with President Trump since day one. He's got a winning strategy to put the seat back in the Republican column. Uh, and he's Is got President huge Trump going to support him in that race? I, I, I don't want to ever. I've learned my lesson about trying to speak for President Trump. But I will tell you, he's Trump's kind of candidate, mm -hmm. uh, and he would do a great job up here and give President Trump another vote. Is Matt Gates going to run for that? Because we asked him, you know, that, that was considered too, I think. I, I, Matt Gates represents a district in Florida. I think Alabama has somebody like Tommy Tuberville right now that's running, and we, uh, I think Alabama will be well served by people like yeah. Tommy. Interesting. Sean, thank you very much. You Good bet. to see you tonight. You bet. Good to see you.